Hi, this is Anthony Taggart from theswingengineer.com. In this video, I'm going to share with you a technique for analyzing golf swings. It's something I call the 10 pack system. When tackling something complex, like solving a maths equation, learning to play piano, or putting together furniture, you must break the task down into smaller parts. Otherwise, it's overwhelming and you'll do a poor job of it. This is something we instinctively do when describing golf swings. Instead of talking about the swing as a whole, we'll divide it into components, like the setup, the backswing, and the downswing. By compartmentalizing in this way, we can better focus our attention on what the golfer and the club is doing. We'll typically divide a swing by a few key positions. These are the address, the top of the backswing, impact, and the finish. We can then observe and describe these positions and what occurs in the periods of time between them. But when analyzing a swing in detail, these divisions aren't enough. Take the downswing, for example. Although it's over in fractions of a second, a lot happens during that time. So to properly understand what's going on, we have to divide the swing into even smaller timescales. The best way to do this is to take the club shaft's alignment during the swing. Each time the club is horizontal or vertical, this marks an additional key position by which we can divide the swing. Using this technique, we can create a 10 step swing. From address at step one, the backswing includes steps two and three. The top of the backswing is step four. During the downswing, we have steps five and six until impact, which is step seven. After impact, we have steps eight and nine until we reach the end of the swing, step 10. So the 10 step swing is what gives the 10 pack system the first part of its name. Now on to the pack part. So far, we've divided the golf swing by time, but we can also separate it by location. And by this, I mean the different parts of the body and club. PAC represents the three sectors of the golf swing. These are the pivot, the arms, and the club. The pivot is made up of the rib cage, the spine, the pelvis, the legs, and the feet. The arms include the shoulder complex, the upper arms, and the forearms. The club sector is comprised of the wrist joints, the hands, and the club. By multiplying the 10 step swing by the three sectors, we can instantly divide any swing into 30 unique parts. And each of these can be given an alphanumeric code for easy reference. So if you're looking at the hands at the top of the backswing, the 10 pack reference would be 4C, step four, sector C. The right elbow at impact would be 7A, the knees at address would be 1P. If we're looking at a period of time rather than a snapshot, let's say the pelvis motion during the downswing, we can call that 4 to 7P. So the 10 pack system gives you a simple yet effective method of dividing the swing into manageable parts for analysis. But it's not just a naming tool, a way to catalog the swing. The 10 pack system can be used to identify problems and solve them. We do this by using the concept of cause and effect. This states that any occurrence is the result of something that happened before it. So there's a reason for an event. It didn't just happen. And the same goes for swing faults. Let's take an example. Let's say you're analyzing a swing and you found a problem. The golfer is coming over the top during the downswing. So the club shaft is off plane and at impact, the club head has an out to in path, resulting in slices or pulled shots. This problem is occurring at four to seven C 
In other words, the club sector from the top of the backswing down to impact. So how do we fix this problem? Typically, a golfer will focus their attention on where and when the problem occurs. In this case, it means consciously manipulating the club head path on the downswing. But this approach seldom works. It's attempting to fix a symptom without looking to see what the cause may be. The first step in discovering the cause is to go back in time and find when the problem first occurs. We already know the club shaft is off plane during the downswing, but was it ever on plane during the backswing? At the very start of the swing, we can see the answer is no. During the takeaway, at reference 1 to 2C, we can see the golfer immediately takes the club head too far inside. It remains under plane from steps 1 to 4, before moving over plane on the downswing. In other words, a looping motion. In this example, the cause of an out-to-in club head path at impact originates at the takeaway. We can solve our club head path issue between steps 4 and 7 by changing it during steps 1 to 4. But what if the backswing was perfectly on plane and our golfer was still coming over the top on the downswing? In this case, we can trace the problem back to another location rather than a previous time. The 10 step swing flows in a chronological order. So what occurs at step one affects what happens in step two and so on. The same concept applies to the three sectors, the pivot, the arms and the club. The following chart lists the major locations of the swing and the order in which one can affect the other. You'll notice it starts from the feet and works its way up the body, then down the arms and finishing with a club head and club face. So looking back at our golfer, we've identified an issue at the very end of our location list, the club head. Now we must work our way back through that list to find the cause of that off plane motion. We'll find the hand path is too shallow at the start of the downswing and then steepens towards impact. This is caused by the right shoulder moving on a flat plane. This in turn is caused by the orientation of the rib cage rotation, which is caused by the lack of lateral spine flexion, which in turn could be caused by a less than ideal pelvis location. So to fix the over the top club head problem, we'd want our golfer to concentrate on shifting their weight over their left leg during the downswing and increasing the sideways bending of their spine to their right. This will drop the right shoulder, allowing the hands and club head to follow suit. So an issue with a club head path in the club sector has its origins with the pelvis and lateral spine flexion in the pivot sector. Hopefully these two examples show you how the 10 pack system can be used to analyze the swing, identify faults and find the cause of these issues so that we can fix them. If you'd like to learn more about the 10 pack system and my methods for investigating and solving swing problems, you can do so with my book, The Golf Enkiridion.